Um, felt the need to make a video and just talk about my takeaways from COVID, what I think about the vaccine. Big thank you to everybody who supported me, everybody who sent me texts, checked up on me, sent me stuff. You know, all the support, you know, I just wanted to definitely shout out everybody and also follow up with 90s type of love. I'm back to filming next weekend, the 15th, Graffiti Alley. I hope y'all still got your outfits. I heard a couple people wore their outfits, but they still gonna come through. That's all good. I just wanted to get into my takeaways on COVID-19. I had COVID pneumonia. It's been 30 days and today was the first day I felt like my fucking self, right? Because uh, when you come from the hospital, you're weak. Like, you're weak. I never have experienced that. But anyway, let me start from the top of the list. Because I really don't want to waste a good crisis. My life has changed. My outlook has changed. My perspective has changed. My appreciation has changed. My appreciation for life. My life. And all the shit I used to cry about. Off top, what COVID felt like to me was having a pit bull as a roommate. What it felt like, it just clamps down on you and it looks for weakness. It just felt like something foreign inside me. It was almost like, yo, watch the cartoons and you see like, I don't know, the Grim Reaper and just visiting you. You know, it gave me those types of vibes, you know. And it's before it even took off. Like, I'm talking about when I just had like, just the regular COVID. I dealt with that for like five days, right? The regular COVID. I was just home eating Advil's, eating Tylenol, switching off, you know, NyQuil, third flu, you know, self-medicating. So I did that for like seven days and then everything changed. And I just remember like, damn, like just when I was dealing with the regular COVID, like how I got myself in that predicament. And one of the things I realized is that I, I gotta stop being overzealous, too eager, you know, when it comes to my dream. So that was one thing, you know what I mean? I could have prevented COVID. I really could have, cause you know, my man was like, yo, I'm sick. That's do it another day. And I was like, nah, man, I need to get this done. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I was like, blah, I really want to get this video done. You know what I mean? And he came through. And when he came through, he was, he was sick. This thing was so sick. He was hit, but he came through, supported anyway. And I got COVID cause he tested positive and I tested positive like six, you know, no, not even six days later, like five days later. So that's one of my takeaways from COVID. Also, looking back, I see how COVID killed people, yo. Like, I see how older people die. I see how people with underlying issues die, you know, because the thing with COVID, yo, it comes to collect. It comes to collect, you know what I mean? That's what it felt like, yo, I'm here to collect. I'm gonna put this on you, I'm gonna shake, I'm gonna see what you can do, what you can handle. For me, I felt like COVID was like, all right, you know what? We gave him the regular shit, turn it up, pneumonia. Pneumonia kicked in. I felt it in my chest the first day I had pneumonia. I felt it in my chest. Only thing I ever knew about pneumonia is what my mom used to tell me. Hey, put a jacket on. Why? It's COVID. I mean, it's pneumonia out there. You know what I'm saying? Pneumonia weather. That's the only thing I ever knew about pneumonia. But let me tell you something. I know what she was talking about now because that pneumonia shit was real. They called it COVID, COVID pneumonia in the hospital. But um, I felt that in my chest and that, you know, I'm still home self-medicating, taking all the meds, all the home remedies, the ginger this and that and this and this and this and that. The pneumonia kicked in, progressed day by day and uh, kept feeling this weirdness. It was hard to sleep, had this little cough. After five days with, with that weird feeling on the fifth day, because I had started taking like these Epsom salt baths to like take away the pain because it was like, I'm telling you, man, it was just like something just gripped on you and it was just like, just holding you. And I would take these Epsom salt baths. So after five days of taking the Epsom salt baths, no, three days taking the Epsom salt bath, on the third day, I couldn't breathe in the tub. So I hopped out the tub. I'm like, yo, I can't breathe. And I went and sat in the living room, butt ass naked, like trying to breathe like this, you know, dripping wet. You know what I'm saying? That's how concerned I was. I went and sat on a couch wet. And I was like, nah, fuck that, something ain't right. And I, it was like 12 at night. And look, I'm taking I'm taking baths at 12 at night. I hopped in my car man, and drove myself to the hospital. By the time I got to the hospital and I pulled up in front of uh, Kaiser, I went to Kaiser Urgent Care. 
I couldn't even hold my my mask on my face, you know what I'm saying, to get in. And I remember like they put the little the little joint on my head, they checked my temperatures and shit like that. And she be like, You gotta put on your mask. I'm like, miss, I can't breathe. So you like, you can't come in. And I just remember being so agitated and frustrated. And I was like, yo, these people gonna let me die. That was the first weird, scary thought I had. And he was like, go sit in the bubble. I'm like, what the fuck is a bubble? Like, you know, because I had tested positive COVID. He was like, go sit in the bubble over there. And I was the only person in this bubble. And I just remember just pulling out my mask, trying to breathe, whatever. Check me in. They started talking about, oh, your oxygen, 87, post ox 87. I never even heard of this shit. They put oxygen on my, my nose and whatever. I think they was like, oh, he needs like five liters, six liters, whatever. I was running something like that. And... It was urgent care, like the oxygen, you know, looking back, like I didn't know this when my first time having oxygen, the oxygen was just, just burning my nose. And I was like, you know, um, I found out later that the oxygen needed to have um, um, some, some type of humidified moisture or something attached to it. But this was urgent care. They ain't had none of that shit. They said, yeah, you got COVID pneumonia, you got pneumonia. They gave me x-rays or whatever on my chest. They say, yeah, we see it in your chest. You see it in your lungs. It's uh, developing, whatever. So I got the oxygen. I was cool, right? Um, I felt better or whatever. So they're like, we're going to have to find your room. It took them two days to find me a room. I stayed in urgent care for two days. Went Friday, left Sunday night in the ambulance, right? And I never forget the look on the nurse's face on a Sunday because I had my first episode and urgent care, like, it's like this cough that happens and then your lungs just like clap out after, cause it, like you just continuously cough and cough and cough. And then like, I don't know, I don't, it's like almost like your, your lungs just like flattened. That's what it felt like. And I had to like, yo, that was the first time I ever screamed for a nurse in, in, in this weird state of fear. Like it was my first time on the dark side. My first thought was, Am I dying? You know what I'm saying? Because I've never went without oxygen. You know what I mean? So, and that was the first time I saw, like, worry on a nurse's face. Because I've been there two days, and they couldn't find me in a room. And they didn't have everything they needed to really treat me the way they wanted. I felt like this lady came in my room with this this look of shock on her face and worry. And she just looked, she's like, baby, can, 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 I, can I send you to, she's, can I send you to, um, Holy Cross. Yo, Holy Cross is on 495. That's like an hour away. But I seen the concern on her face. And that's when I kind of knew like shit was real. Like she was like really concerned about me. Anyway, she ended up giving me a room at um and run the hospital. And they took me out there in the ambulance. You know what I mean? Checked me in late at night. And um I felt a sense of comfort. I had a bed. I don't know what the fuck that shit was on. I was laying on an urgent care. I had a bed, you know what I mean? And uh, I had a team. Uh, you know, they was like, oh, yeah, this is your nurse. This is your doctor. This is your tech. And, man, I felt a sense of relief. And I felt like everything was going to be okay. And they hooked me up. They started running a remdesivir. Remdesivir, you got to take that shit one time a day, along with blood thinners, along with um, steroids, along with antibiotics. I think the remdesivir was an antibiotic. And the whole time I'm thinking, yo, when is COVID gonna let, let up? COVID wasn't letting up. It didn't let up, right? It was another night my lungs did that weird shit again, but this time it was worse. It start like this little cough. <laughs> and it just, just flares up and then your lungs go bloop, like just flatten out with oxygen. I don't know, man, I went in this state of panic and this, I just saw my life kind of like, not flashing away, but I just had these, these, these thoughts of like, yo, am, am I going to make this? Those are some, some really dark thoughts. You go, to go from a normal life into thinking about if you're going to make it, like, I, that hit different, that hit different, that hit different. So yeah, I, I couldn't, couldn't control this cough and my lung, my air went out. And I literally was calling for the nurse. And I was about to be out the mall. I was like two fucking seconds from swinging that door up and running out in the hallway. But I didn't want to leave my oxygen. But I saw me falling out though. They came in and calmed me down. 
I started thinking about my x-rays. I'm like, yo, I need an x-ray. I need an x-ray. It's been five days. Why ain't nobody giving me an x-ray? And I kind of got into it with my doctor when I saw him the next day because I ain't an x-ray. I feel like something going on in my chest. You know, it ain't what it was five days before. Yo, you need to do a fucking x-ray. Me and him kind of got into it. But I'm, I know he saw how scared I was. He sort of failed me. I know he did because I'm like telling him, you need to x-ray me because what happened to me last night is something else. And uh, he did. He did nonchalantly. He was like, yo, you got COVID. It's still COVID. And that's when I was like, yo, this shit ain't letting up. That pit bull, it ain't letting up. Anyway, make a long story short, they end up asking him. They come to my room after like a few days and they were like, yo, we want to give you something else. It was just like trial some type of, I don't know what it was, like, it's called Active One, and they was like, sign off on it, we want to give you this. They had somebody come to your room, big white dude with these big old shoes, something of, you know, we want to give you this and switch it up, and he's got his arms folded, you never seen him before, you like, yo, what the fuck is going on here, like, this shit is really crazy, and I agreed to it, I'm like, yo, run that shit, you know what I'm saying, because my son, my son mom was a, my son's mom was a nurse, and um, I had her get on the phone and talk to him, and she showed me, like, yo, go for it or whatever. She signed off, too. And um, next day, they come to my room, strip all my IVs out, and I just remember seeing these two bags, the IV bags, whatever the fuck they but I don't know what's the protocol. I know these bags was yellow and black, and on the front of the bags, it said chemotherapy. I was like, give me that shit. I don't care what it is. Give me that shit. But that's they ran them two hour IVs in my arm and uh, I ran that shit for like two hours fell asleep and that was the first time I felt a little relief and from there you know I progressed another takeaway from dealing with COVID I feel like um, I definitely say this is a shift my outlook on my life and my appreciation for everything I have you know I started really sifting through all my life my life and you know just things that I've accomplished and things that I've done and I saw my lack of appreciation for everything. I think I went into the hospital with an appreciation level of around about a six for everything I have and done and achieved. And sifting through everything in that hospital, about to lose everything, you know, my appreciation was, is, is right now, my appreciation on a nine. And I say a nine just to give me room to grow. I appreciate everything I have, especially my bed. My bed, you know, I had my bed for a minute. I keep telling myself, ah, oh, my back hurting this and this and that. I should buy any mattress, and, you know, pillow tops and this and this and that. Let me tell you something. When I got home and I laid on that bed, that bed hit differently, man. That bed welcomed me like a motherfucking a uh, hook in a whole house and know I got paid today, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, that bed hit so differently when I came home. Oh my God, yo, yo, you just don't know. But anyway, my appreciation level has changed for everything. But um, not going not gonna to talk everybody off the death, but I just want to share any things, um, a few things. And another thing, last thing, the vaccine. I'm going to just leave on this note. Before I went in, I was totally against the vaccine. My first day out of the hospital, I made an appointment to get a vaccine, but I didn't know I couldn't get the vaccine once you had COVID. I would just say this when it comes to the vaccine, people. I'd rather deal with any side effects, any chances of the side effects, than wrestle with COVID. COVID is a chance of dying. I think with the vaccine, I don't know, it's like side effects. I deal with that shit. So that's just my two cents about that right there. But anyway... Never waste a good crisis. And uh, my outlook, my whole, my life right now, I'm just reconstructing my life. Like, really, it was an eye-opener for me. And, uh, yeah, man, that was me, COVID. The whole month, April, gone. But um, I just want to say thank y'all. I love y'all. And um, I know this video long as fuck, but whatever. I hope it helps somebody, change somebody's mind. And redirect somebody, you know what I mean? And keep them from making the same mistakes for me. 90s type of love. I'm back to filming next weekend. Graffiti Alley, 10 15. I mean, 10 a.m. The weather's supposed to be nice next weekend. Back on. Um, so, hope y'all still got your 90s type of love outfits. Come on down. Vintage picture, vintage backdrop, you know, video, music, you know, the whole nine. And, uh, and be ready to tell me your idea of 90s type love. I'm going to do kind of like a behind the scenes documentary. So if you had, you know, true love in the 90s, I'm going to ask you what's your definition of 90s type love. 
And uh, yeah, it's gonna be like a documentary slash video. So thank you. Love all my supporters, man. Poe, man. Love y'all. I'm back.